The Bara men, who were largely descended from the ancient Irish and Norse sea rovers, used to sail from the Outer Hebrides down to Ulla, in South Mayo and prey on the O'Malley's country. Then Granoiles clansmen would invade Barra, although the territories of the two tribes were divided by over 250 miles of foaming waves. During the 16th century the men of Barra were the boldest of the Hebridean rovers who raided the Ulster sea coast, and in 1545 the MacNeils were among the 4,000 Islesmen, who swore allegiance to the king at Carrick Fergus. In Barra it is still told the story of three soldiers and their magical adventures in Dublin. The MacNeils of Barra were the greatest seafaring warriors of the Isles, and their fighting strength was 200 men. Their plaid embodied the changing colours of the sea, with its blue and green and white checks, and they wore seaweed as their bonnet badge. A Berlin or six-oared galley with sails was quartered with a castle craig on their coat of arms, the supporters of which were fish. The MacNeils' war cry was Buino Bass, Victory or Death, and the clan pipe music comprised a march and a lament. The names of MacNeil and Barra respectively denote Sons of the Champion, and Isles of the Ocean. The ivy-covered ruins of the MacNeil's strong castle of Kisimul crown an island rock in a bay, near Castle Bay Fishing Village, in the southeast of Barra. This is a lofty tower, containing a little hall, with a magazine, surrounded by a six-sided wall which is thirty feet high. Round the rock are cut docks or anchorages for galleys. The castle was built over seven centuries ago, on the site of a Viking fort. The MacNeil's burying place was in the ancient Abbey of St. Bar, on the northern side of their eight-mile-long island. The story of the MacNeil's is a miniature history of Gaelic Scotland. They were a very ancient race, and they once claimed to have been in the world before the flood, explaining their absence from the Ark by the incontrovertible assertion that the MacNeil had a boat of our own. The clan rose to power in 1264, when the Gales of Barra slew the last of the Vikings, who had ruled the island for centuries. Fifty years later the chief, Niall Og, fought at Bannockburn. In 1427, in a battle on the shore of Col Island, the Maclean's and fifty Irish rovers defeated 120 Maclean's of Barra, whose chief was killed, while one clansman saved himself by leaping backwards over a clear, quick brook, after which the Maclean's stormed Kesimal Castle. The Maclean's of Barra, were on the losing side at the Battle of Glenlivet, in the autumn of 1594, when their chief, Roderick O'Rory, was killed by the first shot from the Gordon's field pieces. Late in the 16th century the MacNeils sided with the MacLeans in their fierce feud against the MacDonalds. Rory the Turbulent, son of the Glenlivet chief, having seized an English ship off Barra, was brought to Edinburgh by Mackenzie of Kintail, who had sailed to Kesimul and had captured MacNeil by inviting him on board his ship and having him plied with liquor until it overpowered him. The pirate Rory, however, was pardoned, but his son, having taken, by piracy, a ship of Bordeaux, died during his trial in Edinburgh in 1613. The clan MacNeil of Barra, 120 strong, fought for the Stuarts at Worcester in 1651, at Dunkeld in 1689 and at Sheriff Muir in 1715. When Prince Charles, disguised as an Irish priest, came to the Highlands, his French frigate cruised near the east coast of Barra on July 23, 1745, and the long boat, being sent ashore for a pilot, brought on board the MacNeil's Piper, the first Highlander to serve the Prince. In May, 1746, when the last battle had been fought for the great lost cause, warships came to Barra, and General Campbell's redcoats, scoured the island for the Prince. Roderick MacNeil of Barra, a lieutenant in the old 78th of Fraser's Highlanders, was killed on the Heights of Abraham, at the Battle of Quebec in 1759. One century afterwards his descendant, the last chief, became the colonel of the 78th Highlanders. The latter MacNeil sold Barra in 1840, and ten years later during the Highland clearances, hundreds of the islanders were forcibly shipped to Quebec, where nobody understood their Gaelic speech and they had to beg their way into Upper Canada. The MacNeils never counted the cost of their gallantry or their generosity, and their pride was great. 
It was said that after their meals they used to inform the world, by a blast on a horn from the tower, that all might then feast. As late as 1703 the cockman or guard watched, day and night on Kisimul tower wall, spending his time looking out to sea for invaders who never came, or in throwing stones into the water as he sang Gaelic songs.